Hey guys, welcome back to the show, the Daryl Solis Show, as you know. Today I'm here with my good friend Jack Alderton and he has lived in KL for quite a long time. And you know, from my previous video, you'll know that I'm I'm here for a short time. So I love this city, but I don't have enough experience here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia to give you the best insight on this place, but Jack can. So, Jack, thank you very much for being here today. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You're welcome, Daryl. Thanks for having me. Hey, guys, it's uh, great to be here. I'm Jack. I'm an Aussie. I'm from Sydney, Australia, and I moved to KL primarily for work almost three years ago. So I'll preface, I, I'm not an expert, but I do my best to be authentic and tell you how it really is on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, Jack. Yeah. Jack has his very own YouTube channel, lots of great content about life in Kuala Lumpur. I highly recommend you check out his channel. Link in the description, more about that later. So uh, Jack, as you know, I'm from the UK, from Scotland, and decided to just get out because things are not going well in the UK right now. Um, I've heard some bad things about Australia too, but the UK is far worse. At least in Australia, you've got the good weather. Yep. Um, have you ever been to the UK? I have not been to the UK and for that reason the weather. My family originally is from the UK but I don't have you know that much drive to go there. Trust me, just don't go, <laughs> all right? Stay away from the UK, it's a, it's a horrible place, right? At least in Australia, you've got the nice weather, yeah? So, um, right, okay, so let's get into some of the questions for Jack here. So first question, Jack, what initially attracted you to Kuala Lumpur? And how did your expectations compare to the reality of living here? Great question. So what initially attracted me to KL was Southeast Asia in, in general. And when I'm growing up, you know, in Australia, we're looking at most people, they're going to Thailand, they're going to Bali, they're going to the same tourist places. But Southeast Asia is a lot more than that. And I happened to just get a great job office offer at the right time during the pandemic that brought me to KL. So I was in with an open mind. I'd always lived in Sydney and I was open to really something new. So Southeast Asia was on my list. KL is one of the most underrated places in Southeast Asia. I'd honestly say that from, for many reasons, culturally, um, just location wise, it, it has everything, it's, it's underrated. So in terms of how it's stacked up, it's, I didn't know what to expect because people would tell me, you know, why do you want to go there? Is it safe? A lot of Australians don't know much about Malaysia. They, yeah. they call everyone Malays. Uh, that, that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's Chinese, there's Indians here. It, it really is a melting pot. So it's really turned out fantastic for me. And I love it as a city. I love it as a country. It's a fantastic place. Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to diversity here in Malaysia, you've got pretty much everyone here. And a lot of people seem to think that they wouldn't be able to handle the language barrier here. Well, if you're coming from an English speaking country, I've got some good news for you. Malaysia is pretty much an English speaking country. English is not the official language of Malaysia, but it is widely spoken throughout Malaysia, right? That's right. Yes, you will not have any trouble just speaking English. Of course, I tried to learn some Malay, some Chinese. It will go a long way more from a respect standpoint. But in terms of actually communicating, particularly in KL, you will be able to talk to everyone in English. I will say when you go out of KL to the other cities, you recently went to Ipoh, yeah. Malacca, Penang, um, there's different demographics, different races, and obviously different languages, but that's the beauty of the country, that you can still get by, you can still communicate, all the apps, everything is still gonna be in English. And Malay is actually pretty easy to pick up some phrases and understand the same phonetic sort of ways, and you can use translate apps. So I would say, as a country, compared to, for example, Thailand or Vietnam, you're gonna have a much uh, bigger language barrier there. Malaysia, no worries. Yeah, very good point. I mean. Thailand, of course, uh, a lot of tourism up there. You can find, of course, English-speaking Thai people, um, but in Malaysia, it's, it's way more. And of course, south of Malaysia, you have Singapore. Uh, that's pretty much an English-speaking country too. Uh, but yeah, if you're going to Thailand, it's going to be a bit more difficult um, communicating in English with the local people. All right, Jack, uh, let's move on to the second question. How has your experience been in adapting to the local culture and customs? What were the biggest challenges, if any? Yeah, so mostly it follows on from the language and the communication. Mostly it's been extremely positive and really you're getting the best 
of every culture. Malays, uh, Muslim, is a majority, about 60%, but the country is very respectful of pretty much everyone else. We celebrate Christmas, Easter's not so big, but you know, if you're, if you're Christian or, or Catholic, they've got that. Um, Chinese is obviously a big one, and an Indian, Indian population as well. So you really get the best of everything, and, and I notice very quickly at work, there's a lot of public holidays. Yeah. And why are there so, much, so many public holidays? Because of all these religious celebrations, which is fantastic. So if you get a chance to do Chinese New Year in Kuala Lumpur or Malaysia, you'll have an amazing time. I've never seen so many fireworks. It, it will blow your mind. They light up the towers in all different colors for each of the holidays. Recently, we had Deepavali, the, the Indian one. So that's the Festival of Lights. So I think you've seen some lasers on the towers recently as well. So it really just goes off. So I'll say mostly it's, it's an amazing thing. If you're open-minded and you're open to different cultures, which, which you should be if you're traveling to these places, you'll have fantastic experiences. Another one I just thought of is uh, Malacca, a city down south. Yeah. It, has, it has more of a Christian history. And there's also a Portuguese settlement there, yeah. which, is, which is really fascinating to go there. I was actually you know, firing off some fireworks uh, at the Portuguese settlement. So what an experience that is. I've never had so much sort of accepting diversity and... Yeah, I, th- I think it's been great. In terms of challenges, yeah, there are some things you have to pick up, like uh, taking your shoes off before you go in the house, little things like that. But, you know, you be respectful, you learn some stuff. Um, I could use chopsticks, but here it's, it's very respectful if you put the chopsticks on the plate, not in the bowl. So little things like that, but you'll, 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 have, no, it, you'll have no trouble. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the thing with the shoes, you know, I lived in Japan for so long, like I'm just used to taking the shoes off when I get in. Um, but yeah, uh, lots of different cultures here in Kuala Lumpur. Um, the country pretty much lives in harmony with each other. You know, you've got the Chinese, uh, Malaysian Chinese, you've got the, you got like the Indians here, and you do have like a Christian population as well. All of the, you know, cultures here in Malaysia just live in harmony with each other, and it just works very well, doesn't it? Yeah, anything else to add about the culture? Yeah, so there's, there's a big expat community yeah. here as well, guys. So I work for a multinational company. We've got 90 different nationalities in the office, which is insane. There's, uh, two, there's two Aussies, me and one other, and, but everyone else is from another country. And I think I'm the only person in the company who can only fluently speak one language. Wow. So that yeah. says a lot about me. I've got a lot to learn. At least I'm pretty good at English most of the time. Yeah. But yeah, it's been great to network and just meet so many different people. It's really opened my eyes to the world. And, and Malaysia is a place that really brings people together. And yeah. Yeah, it is. It, you, it doesn't matter where you come from in the world. Here in Malaysia, you know, you will feel at home. I mean, personally, I've only been here for uh, just over a week now. I feel so comfortable, safe here. You know, as we talked about earlier, most people here in Malaysia, especially the capital Kuala Lumpur, they speak English. You have no problem speaking English with anyone here. Uh, right, moving on to the third question. What do you enjoy most about living in Kuala Lumpur? And are there any hidden gems in the city that you would recommend? Well, there's, there's hundreds of hidden, hidden gems. It's, it's a huge city, as you can see. We've got the old culture. You can see the old buildings. And you can also see the, the new high rises, the condos being built over time. So I like to say it is, you know, it's a city of affordable luxury and authentic cultural experiences. You can get to the nitty gritty. You can get right into the old historic sites and see what it's really like. Um, lovely people by the way it's it, it's it's no reflection of, of who people are everyone is is lovely here and you can also see the very high-end uh, luxurious side of the country and the city in terms of in terms of your question hidden gems i would say get out and about go see different things don't just go to the main tourist sites i mean you can go to batu caves you can go to the go up the towers of course you can do all the usual things but i would suggest walking um, if you can handle the heat i would actually get on the floor go walking walk anywhere you will be safe um, we touched on safety before, but uh, as I was saying in our earlier conversation, I think I feel more safe in Kuala Lumpur than I would at, uh, at night in Sydney, that's for sure. I've had no problems in almost three years here. So get out, walk at night, go to different places, talk to different people, socialize. And another thing I was going to mention as well is uh, Malaysia is number 10 on the global peace list. So, so it, uh, that's quite a fascinating uh, achievement, actually. That's higher than most Western countries. It's, it's very peaceful and religions um, live in harmony. In terms of hidden gems, last week I went to uh, Chinatown. I would definitely recommend that for a night out. There's a lot of uh, art murals on the walls. It's really got that nice sort of rustic old school cultural vibe and hidden bars. You know, if you, if you want a drink, you, you can find amazing bars here. Rooftop sky, dive, uh, sky dining. You know, the rooftop bars, unbelievable. I've, I've never experienced anything like that yeah. before. 
And then going to the authentic food places like the Hawker Centers, uh, Pudu near here, Pudu Hawker Center, ICC, I think it's called, is just unbelievable. You'll be mind blown at the affordable, authentic food. It's, it's just it's just fantastic. I could go on and on. <laughs> yeah. Jack recommended Pudu to me earlier today, and that's somewhere I've not checked out yet, but I, I can't wait to check that place out. Uh, so you mentioned safety, that you feel safer uh, here in Kuala Lumpur compared to Sydney. I mean, me too. I mean, you guys, like, especially people watching this video from the UK, as you know, I'm from Edinburgh, Scotland. I don't feel safe in Edinburgh on a Saturday night, guys, right? I'm sure I won't feel safe in any other city in the UK. But here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, I feel incredibly safe. And, you know, you can walk around at night here at the weekend. No one's coming up to you. No one's harassing you. Uh, Some people have commented on my previous videos worried that... Malaysia uh, is not safe for females. I mean, because obviously we're, you know, let's say we are tall white men, okay? So no no one's going to really come up and mess with us, really. Or maybe they would. But for females, what do you think, Jack? I would like to add on that. Yeah, I was told before I moved here that I would be a target in that I stand out because I'm, I'm a white guy and, you know, maybe I look like I have something local people don't. So people told me to be careful. I was also warned about the police. Um, you know, I won't go into that, but you, you hear all these rumors. And the reality is, I'm not going to say it's not true. I mean, things do happen everywhere in the world, but I have not had one single negative experience happen at all. I felt completely safe. I mean, the worst that's happened is, you know, people have been taking photos of me in public, but, you know, I'm okay with that. that that's harmless. Nothing's physically happened to me. I haven't felt unsafe. And yeah, maybe it's because of our stature. As for women, I've heard some stories, but... I've heard a lot of stories in Australia as well. So women probably maybe do need to be more careful, but I I can't speak. I'm not a woman. I will note an interesting one on the trains. Um, You know, this is maybe a little bit controversial. I don't know what you think about this, but there's female only carriages on the trains. And certainly here they appreciate that, that they can have a female section. So I'll leave it up to you to judge, but I generally think it's probably a, a good thing for them. They feel safe, yes. Yeah, absolutely. For any females taking the trains, uh, this is something that they've probably adopted from Japan. Like when I lived in Japan, they have uh, female only carriages. Uh, And of course, that's, you know, it's good because the trains can be quite busy. Can the trains be quite busy here? Uh, They can. They can be busy. It depends on what what line you're on. I get the MRT, which is which is a fantastic modern experience. It's better than the Sydney trains. Um, But the LRT, yeah, can get packed in peak hour. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, obviously we're not female or, or, or maybe someday we will be. No, like. <laughs> no, nah, 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 we're not that woke. But yeah, um, I might cut that out. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, guys, you know, for any females watching this, considering moving to Malaysia, to Kuala Lumpur, especially, we honestly, we don't think you're going to feel danger in this city. It is pretty chill. I mean... I've been on a few dates with some women that have mentioned that they get chatted up sometimes, but you know, women get chatted up everywhere in the world. So, you know, Malaysia is no different, but you know, I would say that this country, this city, this country is absolutely safe compared to the Western world. So question four, Jack, how has living in Kuala Lumpur affected your professional and personal growth? Would you say it has changed you in any significant way? Yes. <laughs> Short answer. Yes, it's been the best thing I've done in my life, to be honest. I, I, di- I didn't know how long I was going to stay. I took the job. Maybe I thought I'd stay six months or a year just to try something different. But I've been here almost three years. And professionally, I, I want to touch on this because you might think Southeast Asia, why would I go work there? You know, I thought people only go to Southeast Asia to be a digital nomad, to work online, obviously earn money in, in the US, UK, Western countries, um, bring that money here and then spend it all. Uh, not true. So my, my salary here is actually higher than what I was earning in Australia, which is, which is not a typical experience. I get it. I, I got a good job. But isn't that fantastic? It, it, it ticks all the boxes. And professionally, it's pushed me to get in front of the camera. I present at work as well. Uh, you know, I'm behind the camera. I'm in front of the camera. Professionally, it's been the best thing. Networking with different people. I think in Australia, it was quite insular. Obviously, it's, it's a multicultural country. But, you know, we had our ways of working. And I didn't really fit into the work culture in Australia. I didn't. And I, I don't think it's what it used to be. It's not as relaxed. It's... Yeah. 
you know, there are some toxic, toxic attitudes here. So I work for a, a great uh, company here. And professionally, it, it, yeah, it's just pushed me to be, to be better. And personally, my personal growth, I mean, I can't say enough. It's, it's really the best thing I did. It's taken me out of my shell. It's helped me explore, um, you know, all the places I wanted to see. And another thing we were talking about before is Malaysia is the perfect hub to travel Southeast Asia. Okay, so you know we've got we've got Thailand, we've got Singapore. Changi Airport is is mind blowing, but KL is 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 very underrated for that too. Air Asia is a Malaysian airline, low cost, flies everywhere in Southeast Asia, flies to Australia, flies to you know a lot of places. So I've been able to travel to Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, Singapore, um, going to going to Indonesia, going to Bali soon. So look, it, it's just been the best thing for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like. Kuala Lumpur is a major hub. If you're wanting to explore Southeast Asia, but you want to base yourself somewhere, absolutely basing yourself here in Kuala Lumpur is a no-brainer because you can pretty much just fly anywhere from here, right? That's it. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, the, oh, we were talking about this. The main low-cost airlines, yeah, Air Asia in, in Malaysia, and Scoot and Singapore Airlines in Singapore. So the flight from KL to Singapore is is about an hour, actually less than an hour in the air, and you know, so wherever you want to go, you can do it from here. Amazing, Jack. What advice would you give to someone considering relocating to Kuala Lumpur? Are there any specific things they should be prepared for? Uh, my advice would be to just do it. <laughs> no, I, I would. I would recommend visiting first. Actually, yeah. relocating is is a big word, and I know a lot of people have different expectations and plans. Um, don't think you need to commit a hundred percent. I moved because of work, but. Depending on what country you're from, if you're from the West, probably you're watching this. Malaysia has a fantastic tourist visa policy. You can come here for three months and experience all the things you want to offer, what, what's on offer here. Um, you can stay in KL, KL, you can go to different cities. Again, you can travel Southeast Asia as well. So in terms of relocating, I would be very confident that you're going to have a good time. But if you're not sure, come and visit. You can always go back and, and, and try again. Maybe it's not for you. But for most people, it is. Another thing I want to point out is it's a lot more family oriented here. If you have a family, I think Malaysia is the best place to be, honestly, in terms of cost of living, the facilities in these condos, everything you want to have, childcare, you know, I hear that from, from my colleagues at work. Childcare is fantastic. You can access amazing health care. You know, health care is important for kids. If you're older, retiree, pretty much anyone can live a great life here. So I would be open-minded and don't have low expectations. I think a lot of people say they come here, they have low expectations, and they're pretty much always pleasantly surprised because there's, you know, just all this on offer. So yeah, I would visit here. I would consider relocating here if you're able to. If you're working online, it's definitely one of the best places to work as a digital nomad. We're just talking about the internet as well. The internet is pretty much fantastic everywhere. You can work from a lot of different locations. Condos have all the facilities, lots of great hotels, places to live and, and, and eat. It's 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 just got everything yeah i mean guys i've been sightseeing around the city checking places out and there are just families everywhere kids everywhere the education system here in malaysia is actually top tier very good there's families from all over the world yep. relocating to malaysia especially from china to uh, put their kids through school um, very high standard when it comes to education. So if there are any families out there in the West thinking of somewhere to bring up their family, to bring up their kids, Kuala Lumpur, again, it is just a no-brainer, right? Yeah, there's a lot of great international schools here. And I would say it's probably one of the best things you can do for your kids. So I was raised in, in Sydney, quite insular. We never really traveled. Uh, my parents never took me as a kid to a lot of these other countries and I do think that inhibited me a little bit in my growth so when I have kids one day I will make sure they at least uh, visit these other countries they inter they you know talk to other kids from different cultures and they develop that sense of you know worldwide citizenship from a young age it's it's fantastic yeah, yeah guys uh, a lot of great points about here in Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur as I've said in my previous videos, of course, there, there is no perfect country, okay? I know the UK is not the worst place in the world to live, absolutely not. But if you're young and ambitious, or even if you're older and want somewhere to retire, coming to Malaysia is just, without a doubt, one of the best choices you can make, especially if you like warm climates i mean the climate here in malaysia it's tropical it's warm you've got a be beautiful nature everywhere uh jack you've been here for much longer than i have so 
what do you think of the the climate and the weather here in Malaysia? Yeah, this this is an interesting one. So I love the tropical weather. I love the heat. I'm big on outdoors. I'll get out. I love the sun, and I love the weather. It's it, it's not for everyone, as you said. It is it, there's no perfect place. It's up to you to make a, a place perfect and fit your lifestyle around it. So it is hot, but I would say the weather is consistent pretty much year round. Mm. To me, that's a good thing. I don't like miserable winters. Sydney, believe it or not, actually has pretty miserable winters. Not as bad as Scotland, though. I'm telling you. Yeah, definitely not as bad. So yeah, I'm grateful. And also to touch on what you said, Australia is a great place. I, I'd never say it's it's not it's not a it's not a great place. But if you have a chance to explore, Malaysia is a great place to do it. As for the weather, um, it is a rainy season at the moment. But you know, does it does it does it really rain a lot to affect your life? Not really. Um, in the afternoon, it will have you know have your showers, your tropical showers. But it clears up, and we're all good again. So I think it's and it's quite predictable as well. Every day, you know, you know it might rain in the afternoon. Just stay indoors throughout that time and you were saying earlier in the late afternoon at night time it's it's just beautiful you get like high 20s um it's just a great night out you know get some nice sunsets here as well surrounded by the mountains it's uh, yeah I, I love the weather my parents came to kale and they weren't so open-minded with the heat and we touched on this earlier as yeah. well there's a lot of malls a lot of shopping centers um that are pumped with air conditioning so that's why they're so popular people go into the shopping centers to get away from the heat but you know you've got all the facilities here you've got air conditioning you've got everything you've got pools pretty much every condo has a pool so just just go in the pool <laughs> yeah uh, about the pools like you know in my previous video guys where i've shown you my small apartment it's got a pool a lot of people thought like i'm staying in a hotel yeah i mean it's pretty you can find hotels in like the uk and europe that have pools but you know what i'm staying in right now this is not a hotel it's just a service department with a pool pretty much the standard here in malaysia right the, you get these kind of buildings everywhere and not just in kuala lumpur but in malaysia right yeah that's right uh, watch the condo tours on on my channel so i've stayed on a long-term lease at two different places now here in kuala lumpur and, and obviously i've seen a lot of different uh, hotels and service departments and I will say it's, it's just fantastic for the value you can get. So my yeah. place, watch the full video, but 614 US dollars a month, 50 meter pool, 250 meter pools, full gym, everything, great view of the towers. Yeah. I mean, and we were saying this before, this doesn't exist yeah. in uh, Western countries, or if it does, it's completely out of my price range that it's not even realistic. Yeah. Yeah, guys, if you want to relocate somewhere in the world, up your style, up your standard, Malaysia is a great option. You know, you can live in really cheap condos, or little apartments with pools, gyms, all kinds of facilities that you that you would like to use, and it's just just an absolute no-brainer, guys. When it comes to um, living here in in a country that offers you a high standard, luxurious life that is affordable, unlike the UK. You know, if any building in the UK has some kind of facility like a pool, you're paying top dollar for that. What's it like in Australia? Same thing. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, here we've got 50 meter pools within the condo. Like it, it, Australia is the best swimming nation in the world and we don't have that. We have to go to the public pools to swim in a proper Olympic length pool. But here you can get it at home. So I yeah. think that's fantastic. And uh, yeah. 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 Honestly, guys, you will love it. Check Malaysia out. Check Kuala Lumpur out. Base yourself here. Travel around Southeast Asia. If you've never been to this part of the world, guys, and you're maybe, you know, a little bit kind of worried about what's it like here, come and explore it. You're going to love it. Most people do. So, guys, it's been a real pleasure having Jack Alderton on the show. Jack, I'm going to pass the mic over to you for any wisdom you'd like to pass on to our viewers. Go ahead. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I was just saying, I want to wrap it up by saying KL is a very international city. And if you want a really authentic experience, you can get it. If you want your home comforts, you can go to the grocery store. I can buy Coles and Woolworths products. If you're from Australia, you'll, you'll know that. And it's actually pretty much cheaper. I can buy Australian beef at the supermarket here cheaper than I can buy it in Sydney, which is quite amazing to be honest so you can get everything you get your tim tams you can get your local products <laughs> you know tim tams yeah. yeah so you get all your local products here shoppy is the online shopping yeah. next day delivery pretty much free delivery everything you want you can buy it online better than ebay better than amazon wow. to be honest so i just think 
Kuala Lumpur is a really great city and Malaysia as a country. We also got to remember there's East Malaysia, Borneo Island, which is like, you know, a rainforest. You've got the Sabah, Sarawak. It's very diverse. You can go up north to Ipoh. You can go down south to Malacca. You can go all the way up north to Langkawi and Penang. So many different places to explore. I mean, we could we could go on and on and on and there's so much more I'd love to share. But I hope you guys got a lot of value from that. And I'll certainly be posting a lot more videos about this on, on my channel. And I'm sure Daryl will be too and about his future adventures. So I want to say thank you so much for having me on and giving me an opportunity to share my experience. And I hope you guys got some value from it. You're welcome, Jack. Guys, check out Jack's channel. He's got some great content. As I said at the start of the video, link in the description. If you like more videos like this on you know, myself interviewing interesting people that live outside of their country, hit that subscribe button. Guys, thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.